from uh, drama student to British Bond girl. At uh, just 24, actress Gemma Arterton has already made it in Hollywood, starring alongside the likes of Daniel Craig. Mr. Bond, my name is Fields. I'm from the consulate. I don't want to change the world. I'm not looking for a new England. He was brilliant when I was little. It's filled up the place. If you attempt to flee, I will arrest you, drop you off in jail, and take you to the plane in chains. Understand? Oh my gosh! Oh, oh. I'm so sorry! You want to go to a party? I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. I don't mix business with pleasure. And I've got a lot on. And Gemma joins us now. Good morning to you. We, I mean, I'm stumped because I don't know where to begin with you. There is so much. I mean, your CV is just incredible. And you're 24, and yet you look at that and you just go, wow, what a life you've already led. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's right. I mean, I just watching that, that was, I think there were three films in that. And I, I think I've done um, 11 in two and a half years. Plus, like various TV. Have you taken TV. Any time off or anything? A little bit, but <laughs> no. I'm sort of, at one point, I, I mean, I'm doing a play at the moment in the West End, and I've been reshooting scenes for, for two films during the day, and then going off and doing a play in the evening. But well, you know, well, it's, hats it's, off to you. I mean, it's well, incredible. Let's, let's let's do uh, we'll do the films first and get those sort of wrapped up because you've got. You know, I mean, we've got a list of things you've got coming out, and uh, there's yeah. no chance of blah, getting blah, through blah, all blah. of these. <laughs> so, but remaking Clash of the Titans. This yes. is one of your favourite stories from yes. when you were... one uh, of my favourite films, yeah, and so we made a new film of it. And this is the classic Laurence Olivier, Urs film, yeah. Yeah? yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And it's filmed in 3D as well, which is... Yeah, no, wonderful. it's sort of filmed normally and then we decided to do it in 3D. Ah. So it's coming out in April. Ah, OK. Um, so that's the first one. And in that one, you're, uh, you're Lo, the first mysterious spiritual guide. Yes, yeah. I'm a mysterious demigoddess. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> And, and then, then we've got the disappearance of Alice Creed. And this is very, very different for you, actually. And this is where you pay a, a millionaire's daughter who's been kidnapped. And this is quite gritty and no makeup and a pretty rank tracksuit. Really have, rank right? tracksuit, yellow Primark pants, you know, really sort of... Uh, stripping it all back. Stripping and you all back. still look gorgeous. It's a great film. I'm very proud of it. It's, it's kind of an antidote to Hollywood, sort of... It's very, very basic, and um, yeah. and we made it for less than a million pounds, which is kind of really well, nothing sort of, in the film industry. That, I mean, this, that's on the 30th of April, but that sort of sums you up, really. You are kind of the antidote to Hollywood, in a way. <laughs> because here you have this world that is so sort of superficial and shallow, and it sort of eats people up and spits them out, particularly when they're young. And yet here you are, surviving and doing so incredibly well. And behaving so impeccably and beautifully with it all. Oh, that's very sweet if you'd say so. But how does that happen for you and for others? They just sink. Um, I think it's being around my family and friends who are very normal and yeah. sort of knowing that the rest of it is crazy. I think when you get sucked into the craziness, that's but knowing that it is crazy and it's not real, keeping in the modern in the world that is real, you know, yeah. and being you aware of... You describe your, your, your mum as a grafter, you know, someone who uh, is hard-working, someone you can go home to and who will tell you if you yeah. your feet are leaving the ground. Yeah, they're, they're, just, they're just normal, you know, and they're not phased by any of the sort of glitz, even though they love it, you know. They you must have been slightly phased when Daniel Craig was kissing down your back, because I know at that point I might have had a little wobble myself. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a... A sort of whoa moment in my life. That was a one of those. Well, I, mean, I can't believe this is happening. You didn't. <laughs> did you? Was that plan? Did you know he was going to kiss your back at that? No, moment? completely didn't. And actually, in this scene, you can see me go like that <laughs> because I really didn't know he was going to do it. So I thought he was just going to kiss my neck or something. And I went like, oh goodness. <laughs> and that was the first scene you chopped together for the movie. So that was a real, like, hi, welcome on set. Right, let's get naked and kiss up my back. Yeah. And it, <laughs> well, you didn't know he was going to do it? No, I and didn't isn't there know. Any, isn't there any moment when, as an actress, you, you're going to turn around and say, get off, you perv? Mm, no. <laughs> Daniel Not with Craig. Daniel Craig. <laughs> And that's okay, that's accepted, is it? If you, you know, you go in there, first day filming, I just want to know, that's all. I think it depends on the, on the actor that you're working with. 
How does it weigh? What's the what's the hierarchy level here? Usually Who's you do allowed talk on about first day it. of filming to, to lick an actress's back without telling them? Well, Bond. <laughs> <And> <laughs> we start with Bond, and then <laughs> Bond can do whatever. But he likes. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> now you mentioned the uh, you mentioned the play, which yes. uh, which is in uh, in the West End. It's at the Garrick, isn't it? You finish right. on the tenth of April. A little dog laugh. That's right. And this once again is about that undercover bit of Hollywood, you know, keeping things quiet that perhaps you want to tell the world. Yeah, it's, um, it was an important story for me to tell because being a British person, a British actress, and, and, and in Britain it's very different to Hollywood, the sort of film industry. And I just thought, and it's more a story about um, why we can't just be ourselves in the world, why th these things block us from, you know, success and what we expect of ourselves block us from expressing our real wants and needs, and I think it's a real tragedy and even though it's a very funny play it's a comedy um, I wanted to tell the story I thought it was interesting well the story is of, a, of an actor who wants to come out and tell the world that he is in fact gay and yet his uh, agent wants to keep it under wraps yes. doesn't want him to come out because yes. it might do, you know scupper his, scupper his future career yeah and um, and I was reading something where you were saying you know actually it's quite true to life and there's a lot of people you know who are in the industry who are going through exactly this and yeah. they can't tell the world yeah yeah, and it's, un it's unfortunate that it's like that. You'd think yeah. we'd have moved on. It's well, 2010, you, you, you know. Would. But, yeah, I don't and how know. how do you sense that in Hollywood, that there yeah. is still this... Well, look, there's definitely cover-up and definitely, um, you know, being a product rather than just being oneself. And mm. I think that it's a protection thing as well. I think, you know, you have to do that to some extent. Um, but I think it's an interesting... I mean, there's actors that it's compared to, you know, the Rock Hudson story and... Mm. And, and, you know, we've all got our ideas of who's in the closet in Hollywood, but mm. it's a sh I think it's sort of an interesting subject, so that's why I wanted to do the play. Well, and, and a great cast as well. So you've got, uh, you've got Rupert Friend, uh, who's Kira Knightley's boyfriend. Uh, He's brilliant he? in it. He's such a brilliant actor. And uh, a mate, he plays the actor that's covering up, that's gay. And, yeah. and uh, it's a real sort of departure from what he usually does. There's the, there's the line-up there. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> and, and you're the girlfriend of, uh, of the rent boy that he falls for. That's right. It's really complicated. <laughs> um, yeah, who I end up being the, the beard, the cover-up girlfriend. Uh -huh. And how's it been sort of returning to the stage? Because you, I mean, you have been on the London stage before, but only once, Paul, and this is your first West End debut. And it, I mean, it, like you said, you've made 11 films in the last two years. So has it been a big change? Is yeah. It's a completely different work it, it ethic? Is. But I feel so comfortable in it, and um, it's what I trained to do. And um, I was at drama school and trained in theatre, and that's what I kind of always imagined I'd do. So I'm here again, and I love it. It's and something very different today, because, uh, and this is going to seem like a question that's come out of nowhere, uh, Britain's Got Balls. Yes, yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm actually here. No, I, I'm supporting the Britain's Got Balls um, tour, which is national lottery funded. Um, it's basically celebrating Brits that... Uh, you know, make, take the National Lottery funds and use it and like, use it to change their community and make a difference. And so, you know, we've, I was down at the South Bank this morning with the English National Opera and this great, like, street dancing company called Creative Culture Club, and they use the National Lottery funding. Mm. And I wanted to do, support it because, you know, it's, uh, my drama school is nationally, national lottery funded. I think mm. they got millions to reform well, the we'll drama put, school. Uh, we'll put details of that uh, on our website and link to the national lottery yeah, website as well. Yeah, it's um, lotterygoodcauses.org.uk. Well and we'll link to it as <laughs> well. And you're Gemma, at the Garrick so until, the, uh, until the 10th of April. I am. Thank you Thank very you much so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.